If you were a big investment bank and you were charged with the task of making a return on billions and billions of dollars that you have under management, how would you go about doing that? Would you leave certain things to chance? Would you just place trades like everyone else? Or would you potentially look for ways that you can engineer the markets in your favor? This is level two market psychology, the relationship between pain and certainty of liquidity. So regardless what you would do as a trader in that situation, let me tell you what the banks actually do. The banks will stop at nothing and do whatever is necessary to guarantee that they have profits. They're in the business of that. It's emotionless to them. It's all about how much money can they make. And that's the bottom line. Now, making profits on billions of dollars is much different than making profits on millions or thousands of dollars. Why is that? Well, when you need to move around billions of dollars as a whole, you run into one big problem when you're a bank or a big institution. And that problem is liquidity. You see, when they look to trade, they need someone that they can trade with. So that either needs to be a really big institution like them, or it needs to be a lot of retail traders, or it needs to be a combination of both. Either way, they need liquidity in the market for them to get in their positions. And then when the market gets where they think it's going to go, or they manipulate it there, they need liquidity to get out and make that spread between when they got in and when they got out. That is their profit. But they need liquidity on both sides to make sure that that happens successfully. So how can you almost guarantee that there's gonna be liquidity to get in and get out when you're that size? It's pretty simple. You understand where the market as a whole is going to be put into pain because pain creates action and action creates liquidity. So that's what this lesson is going to be all about. This is going to be a relatively short lesson, but a very, very important lesson. So let's briefly revisit a few things that we've already covered throughout this series, but are very relevant to this lesson. The markets are controlled through pain and pleasure. Now, what does that mean? That means that the markets, the, the actual liquidity shifting back and forth in the market is ultimately controlled by a natural human response. And what is that? It's a response to pain and pleasure, okay? Pleasure causes traders to be complacent and lax. What does that mean? It means that when you're in a profit or you see a profitable trade on your screen, it makes you feel what? It makes you feel good. Do you want it to ever end or do you want that profit to keep increasing? You want it to keep increasing. Therefore, you stay in the market because you're also afraid of it going without you and you could have had a much bigger profit, right? So it feels good. You don't want it to stop. You just want it all to just keep on going, okay? That's complacency. So it makes it very hard for traders to take profits off the table. Pain causes certain immediate action, just like touching a hot stove. If you see your account going in the negative, and it might be a profit that you've already seen, but now you're losing that profit. That feels painful. Or you might have just gotten into the trade and now you're out of the money. Same thing. Anytime you are now losing money or something is being taken away from you, it is painful when it comes to the markets. And what do we all want to do as humans with pain? We want it to end. We want to end it as fast as possible. So what does that translate to? Pleasure means that we let profits run and typically because the markets range 95 plus percent of the time, they come right back and take us out of the money. When we get out of the money, it's very easy to take decisive action. But the problem is we're doing it at a negative. So now that we've revisited the basics of how pain and pleasure affect the market as a whole, we want to zero in on one of those specifically, which is pain. Okay, Pain is certain as far as the action that traders take. When they feel pain, it is almost guaranteed that they are going to want to end that pain. They're going to want to get out of that trade. The market makers need certainty of liquidity to run their business profitably. They are going to be very interested in where traders' stop losses are because those stop losses represent what? They represent pain, they represent action, and they represent liquidity. And that's usually liquidity to get in. And then they're also very interested in traders' stop losses on the other side because that is liquidity to get out. So you could almost think of the market maker's plan as figuring out where are the stop losses to take the market to so I could get in. And then when I get in, where are the other stop losses on the other side that I could take the market to to get out? So knowing what we know about the big banks and the fact that they are not going to leave things up to chance if they can help it, 
we could come to the conclusion that market makers or the big institutions set up ways to guarantee liquidity. The way that they guarantee liquidity, again, is through understanding where other traders are going to be put into pain because pain guarantees action in the form of closing trades, and that action means liquidity. Let's look at an example that walks us through a potential way that a market maker would set the situation up. So in this example, we're gonna see how the normal trader would deal with this rising market. So right here, we see the market made a bottom. You can see that there's a P right there that represents the pleasure response. So we've had traders that have found their way into the bottom of the market right here, have bought and are feeling pretty good. They're starting to get into the money. Where would they put their stop loss? they would probably be looking at that very low point. So we have a red line there and it says certain liquidity because that's what the stop is. The stop is them telling the market maker, telling the bank, hey, guess what? Here's my stop loss. This is exactly what I'm gonna feel uncomfortable. Should price get to this level? Right here is where I'm gonna be in pain. <laughs> that's the power of the stop loss, right? So they're giving that information up front. So as the market goes up, here it comes again, we get another P there. More traders are coming in, buying the market. They're all getting in the money, feeling good. Where's their stop loss going? Maybe below the last little low right there. So we'll put a stop loss right there. There's for certain gonna be some people that are looking at that low to control risk by. Another point of certain liquidity. We keep going up. Here's another pleasure response. More traders have entered the, entered the market. We have another pretty defined pullback right there as the market rises. So we'll put another stop loss point right below that low. We have another point of certain liquidity. Let's keep going. So the market now really starts to take off. All these traders are now all in the money. They're all feeling really great. But what happens when you feel good, when you're in pleasure? They're wondering how much further could it keep going? This looks like a really big breakout. I think that this one's going to the moon, right? They become lackadaisical, but guess what? They left all that certain liquidity behind in the form of stop losses, ripe for harvesting, for getting in trades for the banks. So the bank starts dumping supply into the market. Remember, the banks control the supply, market makers in particular. They control the gates of supply. So all they got to do is dump supply into the market and prices go down. What does that do? It hits all of those stop losses, creating liquidity in the market at great prices because guess what? If the uptrend is still intact, if the market still ultimately is going up, the money flow is headed up on the larger time frames. this is all temporary. So here comes all that liquidity into the market in the form of those stops getting hit, pain response is getting triggered, market makers take the other side of that, their accumulation becomes complete, they got what they need, and then sure enough, here comes the real move. This is a very, very important lesson to learn. In fact, this is probably the most important lesson you'll ever learn when it comes to trading, and I don't care what market you're trading, or understanding where pain is released into the market, where that pain response is controlling traders' decisions. If you understand those edges of the market and where they likely are, then you start to think like the banks because, again, they're thinking about liquidity. Where do I get in? How do I get in? How do I get enough liquidity to get in? And how do I get enough liquidity to get out? You start thinking about the markets from that perspective, you will start understanding all the market moves, things that maybe used to totally confuse you. You're like, how could that even happen? How could the news come out and the market does that? It'll all start to come together for you when you start thinking about it from the point of view of pain, and certainty of liquidity for the banks. So what's the takeaway? Profits are not left to chance, especially when billions are at stake. Market makers and institutions will not simply hope for liquidity to enter the market. They will set things up so that liquidity is certain. The way to guarantee liquidity is to guarantee action from other traders. Pain equals action.